All right. Hey, I wanted to mention to you what was going on with the case study website that I discussed in a previous video. So uh, if you have subscribed and you watch my videos, then uh, you may have caught that one. If not, uh, you can go back and check it out and catch up a little bit. But this is the second case study video. And what I wanted to do was show you how some of my initial posts uh, were being ranked in Google. And we can take a look at that. We'll go ahead and start right now. So we're looking at, at the Google Search Console, and uh, this is just a screenshot of my Google Search Console. I did that so I could hide the domain. I don't want to reveal the domain yet because I just want the traffic to be real traffic. So when we look at this uh, information together, uh, you'll know that it's not being inflated by people who come and visit, visit my channel. So here are the key things to take a, that we want to consider in this particular uh, search results screen in Google Search Console. So far, uh, I started posting right around the 20th of June. It's now almost the 20th, 20th of July, so this is a month in. And uh, you can see right about the 2nd of July, uh, some of my uh, blog posts started getting a little bit of traction, started generating some impressions and, and clicks. And so far, uh, the, the highest day that we've had uh, for, from the standpoint of impressions is just a little over 80 impressions. So the interesting thing is the average position in Google search for all 14 posts uh, that I should explain that as well. I've done 14 blog posts, not a lot. I just haven't had as much time to work on this as I had hoped. Uh, but we're averaging about 22.7 in the Google SERPs. This is the thing that concerns me here. The click-through rate is pretty low. It's only 1.5%. I really would like to see that closer to 3 or 4%. So as we go through this information, I can talk a little bit more about how I might figure out a way to boost that click-through rate. Uh, but, but actually, the, the fact that, you know, a brand new domain, a fresh domain, uh, is actually generating, you know, at least the traffic that it's showing here is, is actually pretty good for a brand new domain. I mean, right now we're sort of in that Google sandbox period. Google's just trying to understand, you know, what is the website about? Uh, am I here for the long run? So it's sort of looking at what is my posting schedule and frequency. It's doing some experimentation as well. So, you know, if you have a brand new blog, it's a fresh domain, you can expect that Google's going to sort of do some A-B testing. And what I mean by that is... Uh, they're going to throw posts that you may complete in an underserved keyword. They may put it at position, you know, three or four for a while just to see if people click through. And if they do, you may hold that position for a while. But if you don't get any click throughs, then you may find that some of these posts do fall lower down in the Google SERPs. So, uh, you know, it's all just a fresh experimentation period for Google to try to understand more about what your website is about, who your audience is, what the information is that you're trying to address. And so um, expect that this, these results are going to be fairly volatile uh, for the first six months as Google begins to understand what it is your blog is about and what you're writing about. The other thing that I wanted to mention... Uh, and I'm going to do this right now. As we get further into this particular video, I'm going to be showing a variety of different products that I'm using to write these blog posts and do keyword research and SEO optimization. Some of these I am affiliates for and do receive a commission if you choose to click on a link and make a purchase. So I just wanted to get that out of the way up front. So let's get back into Google Search Console. So this is the Google Page Speed Insights. And what Google does is it has an emulator. It emulates a mobile phone device or a desktop device. And then it goes out and pings your website and comes back with a performance score. 
And the reason I'm showing you the performance score for my website is, if you remember from the first video, I, I'm building this with straight up static HTML. So basically it's static HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript. I am not building this on top of WordPress. So my site is really, really fast. These page performance scores reflect that. As you can see, uh, my overall performance score is 100, which is great. Um, I've always had trouble with WordPress sites uh, getting anything close to the scores you're seeing here. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm sure there's some really uh, fast uh, WordPress hosting available to do that along with people that are WordPress gurus. Um, I don't consider myself to be that. So um, I always struggled with page speed and I believe that Google does uh, reward sites that uh, load quickly. And, and the reason I say that is because you have probably 50% or more of the people that visit a website are doing it on a mobile device. So it is uh, really important to have a very speedy, fast website. So that's why I'm showing you this, uh, just giving you an idea that when you build a site in static HTML, uh, and there's lots of static HTML uh, site builders out there. I'll show you the one I'm using here in just a second. But uh, anyway, uh, I thought it was worthwhile showing you this data. So the next piece of data that I want to show you is the ranking for the articles that I've written so far. So as you can see, I've written 14 blog posts. And they are all ranking anywhere from the highest ranking I have is a position 5, a 6, and a 7. So in the top 10, 28% of my posts are, are ranking in the top 10. All of these 14 posts are what I would call informational blog posts. They have either zero or low search volume, and, and they are more along the line of, uh, along the lines of how to, can you, does it, you know, those kinds of questions. Um, and those are generally the easiest ones to rank for in the beginning. So that's why I chose, chose those particular types of posts. Uh, what concerns me, of course, is stuff that you see in the red. Uh, basically, if I didn't see it after 50 search engine results, I just left it at 50. It could This article 14 could be 100 for all I know. I just didn't want to count that far down in the search engine results page. So I've got a 50, a 37, and a 50, and another 50. The 23 is not too bad, but anything that was outside of the scope of 20, I had to rate it a red. Uh, I have a 28. So, you know, in the top 10, I have 28% of my posts. In the top 20, I have 57% of my posts. Um, but I really need to go back and w I'm going to wait for a little while to see if some of these rise in the rankings. If they don't, I've got to go back and see uh, what I think is wrong. And typically, you know, when you have posts that don't appear, it means the search intent uh, of the of the user who's trying to find this information, it's different than what you've written about. You may have think you may think you've written about something that's useful for them for that particular search phrase, uh, but apparently it's missing the mark. So um, I feel pretty good about where things are at after just a couple of months because, like I said, a brand new fresh domain. Uh, Google's doing a lot of experimentation on where to place these posts within the search engine rankings. So I just wanted to show something very quickly. Um, this is a website that I have. It's called aboutflyfishing.com. It's sort of an experimental site. And what I mean by experimental, uh, I am not an SEO specialist and I'm not trying to uh, show you that I am. I just use this site for SEO experimentation. I'm like you. I'm learning along the way. We're learning together, which I think is really fun. Uh, and the one thing that I'm doing with this site is just trying out different types of posts, different title structures, um, just different things to see if anything breaks out uh, from, the, from the standpoint of the search engine rankings that I get for these posts. The one thing that I've noticed is when a new blog goes for informational blog posts, I just want to show you something quickly here. 
for this keyword phrase, expensive versus inexpensive fly rods, um, this particular phrase is one that uh, is slightly underserved. And actually, um, you know, there's a lot of room in this particular phrase. Uh, it, it's, it's sort of a, uh, one of those that, you know, you should be able to rank for fairly easily based on my keyword research tool that I use. But I want to show you what you're up against with some of these informational posts. So again, I'll just go back. You know, I, I was looking for this keyword, our exp expensive versus inexpensive fly rods. That's what I wrote my post for. So as you can see, our expensive fly fishing rods really that much better is holding the number one position. I like the title. It's intriguing, right? And as you go through and you look at some of these posts, you can see they all look the same, right? So you're, when you're writing these informational blog posts, you're competing with these other people. So what does it take to, to sort of break through and get somebody to click on your post versus some of the others? And I'm beginning to think that sites that do something like the one that holds this number one position instead of using just expensive versus inexpensive fly rods in the title only, uh, making it into a question like they did here, um, I think that's really capturing the search intent. Now, where did I end up here? So we're one, I'm not gonna count YouTube videos, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So here I am, number 20, expensive versus inexpensive fly rods. So I've always been under the impression that you want to use this keyword phrase that you're going for right in your title like this. But man, that's pretty boring, right? So I think part of my problem is I need to look at my title structure. If there's an SEO expert out there that's watching this, or if you've been experimenting with, with your titles and, and you want to leave a comment or shoot me an email, I'd love to hear uh, how you're doing uh, with more unique titles. Because the key thing is when you look at the performance and Google Search Console, you know, again, it's the click-throughs that make all the difference. It's not the page impressions. So if you have a website that's got, you know, 20,000 page impressions, but you're getting a very, very low click-through rate, the only thing that earns you money on a website is when somebody actually clicks through as a unique visit. Or they're a repeat visitor. But, but the bottom line, if they're not clicking through, you know, you're not making affiliate sales you're not uh, earning ad impressions and earning money that way. So um, that's what I'm sort of looking at is really tuning up my titles to see if I can get them to be more interesting, capture the search intent, and get a higher click-through rate than I have right now. So from a workflow standpoint, I just want to just briefly touch on the tools I've been using. Um, maybe you've seen my Low Fruits video. Low Fruits is... Uh, tool that's specifically uh, made for finding informational type keywords and it is really easy to use. It's really fast. It does a great job at finding those uh, low-hanging fruit type keywords that you can use, uh, especially if you've got a brand new blog. Um, they're sort of the types of posts that can get you some traffic early uh, and I really like low fruits for that. I, I've been writing my blog posts in a variety of different tools. Um, I've been using Surge Graph, the Koala Writer's one that I've been uh, using to write some blog posts with, quite a few actually, and I really love this tool. Surge Graph is a, little new, is a new one for me. I've recently got the subscription and been writing articles and using it, and we'll have some videos on Surge Graph here in the future. I already have some Koala Writer videos and uh, really like the tool. Another new tool for me that I just got a subscription to is seowriting.ai. And 
this one has just an exceptional one-click blog post tool. And I've been writing articles for, for my uh, case study blog using it as well. So uh, those are the three tools that I've been primarily using. And I will have some videos on seowriting.ai and SurgeGraph coming up really soon. Now for SEO optimization, uh, for the tools that I do run SEO op optimization with, uh, I'll pull them into Neuron Writer and optimize them there. I've been using this tool for about a year. It does a great job. Uh, Neuron Writer is very similar to SEO Surfer and some of the other uh, optimization tools out there. So it's part of my workflow. Now the posts themselves have been written in a content management system called Publii. It's open source, it's free, it's a static HTML generator. So I've been hosting my website at Netlify. So Netlify actually allows you to do free hosting up to a certain point. Um, and so I, it, it's great for hosting static HTML websites and that's where I've been uh, hosting this new case study site. So that's about it for the case study site. Uh, We've got 14 pages uh, indexed in Google. Uh, I'm writing more articles. Uh, I'm experimenting with titles. And so um, in the interest of full transparency, as I mentioned in the beginning, some of the tools here I am an affiliate for, so I receive a small commission if you choose to use them and make a purchase. Uh, and until next time, take care.